I'm Sheetal Arora, Assistant Professor Criminology at Sadar Patel University of Police Security and Criminal Justice in Jodhpur. And I am going to present a module on Intelligence Branch, Crime Branch, CID, Directorate of Vigilance and Anti-Corruption. Let's begin with learning objectives of this module. First, to make the learners understand the various department of police in India. Second, to make the learners understand organizational setup of intelligence and crime branches in state police in India. Third, to acquaint the learners with the laws, functioning and jurisdiction related to intelligence branch, crime branch, CID, Directorate of Vigilance and Anti-Corruption and other branches. Let us begin with brief introduction. During the British rule in India, the government was usually dependent on the village watch system for the collection of information about crime and socio-religious development in the remote areas. There was hardly any organized system of reporting information of political nature. Personal contacts with the Zamedas and other influential persons of the society were also used in collecting information of the local administration. In the 19th century, a class of functionaries known Goindas, meaning spies, was appointed only to suspected Thanas with instruction to keep track and report the activities of the Darogas. However, with growth of political consciousness and political institutions in India, the need for collection of political intelligence arose. The history of intelligence organization is in fact linked with the history of national awakening and the development of organized political activities in the country. In India, the police force is entrusted with the responsibility of maintaining public order, prevention and detection of crimes. Each state and union territories of India has its own separate police force. Besides police, states also maintain their own armed police and have separate intelligence branches, crime branches, etc. Police set up in the cities like Delhi, Kolkata, Mumbai, Chennai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Ahmedabad, Nagpur, Pune, Bhuvneshwar, Katak, etc is directly under Commissioner of Police who is empowered with magisterial powers. Recruitment of senior police post in various states is manned by the Indian Police Service cadre on all India bases. Central Police Forces, Intelligence Bureau, Central Bureau of Investigation, Institution for Training of Police Officers and Forensic Science Institutions are under central government. These agencies assist the state in gathering intelligence, maintaining law and order and investigating special crime cases and providing training to the senior police officers of the state governments regarding the intelligence wing in Indian police. Every government requires an agency that keeps track of the activities of anti-social and anti-national elements who aim at fomenting disaffection against the lawfully constituted government and disrupting normal life. Also needed is the facility to monitor public opinion or the performance of the government so that quick corrective action is initiated to prevent a breakdown of law and order or economic stability. This twin role is fulfilled by the intelligence branch and the district and state level. It is a sensitive group which has to be manned by personal proven integrity and ability for collecting information in an unobtrusive manner. On matters of mutual interest such as terrorism, VIP security, religious fear, especially Hindu-Muslim conflict, the state intelligence coordinate with the intelligence bureau of the central government. Regarding formation of intelligence wing, during the Congress movement, Lord Dufferin, the then Viceroy of India, became aware of the inadequacy in the system of political intelligence and perceived Indian National Congress a threat to the stability of the empire, thereby submitted 
a proposal for creating a system of collecting political intelligence. In response of Dufferin's proposal, the Secretary of State for India on December 22, 1887 issued an ordinance for setting up a central special branch and special branches of the police department at the headquarters of each provincial government. Initially, the central special branch did not have any unit solely under their control and were merely collating and compiling their reports received from the provincial special branches. However, in the distant and remote areas of the empire, there was need for collecting military intelligence. It was then in 1901, central special branch which was only responsible for the collection of political intelligence was decided to expand its power to include a small staff of selective detective agents employed to monitor political movements and to deal with those forms of organized crime that extended beyond the limits of a single province. Regarding the intelligence branch office, the intelligence branch was divided into two main divisions. First, Secret Service Division. Second, the branches responsible for processing and dissemination of intelligence. The Secret Service branch dealt with intelligence collection and for which they were primarily dependent on the agents. Agents were the paid informers of the branch. The officers with special aptitude for recruiting agents were selected for intelligence branch. The processing and dissemination of intelligence was done by the other branches in the IB office. The confidential section did the cheat indexing and from there the particulars of suspects used to go to indexing section for card indexing. This section alone used to handle the folders containing the reports of the agents. That is why precautions was taken to ensure secrecy as leakage of the source report might lead to the disclosure of identity of the sources. Besides, it maintained the party organization-wise records of information regarding formation of district intelligence branch office. The idea of forming intelligence branches at district headquarters considered serious when ramification of the underground conspirational organization was not confined to Calcutta alone, but had spread to the districts. In early 1908, the special branch was set up some centers in places such as Midnapur, Barishal, Diyoghar, Kustia, Khulna, Jishore, as these places had underground organizations. Each of these centers was in charge of an inspector who was detailed from Calcutta and remained stationed at the center till he was relieved by another. On the eve of the First World War, it was felt the necessity of a senior officer in charge of the intelligence branch in the district. In some of the affected districts, additional superintendent of police was posted to head the district intelligence branches. Where there was no additional superintendent of police, the superintendent of police was designated as superintendent of police in charge of the district intelligence branch. The larger districts like Midnapur, Dhaka, Chittagong, etc. had one additional superintendent of police in charge of the district intelligence branch. The duty of the intelligence branch of the district police was twofold. Collecting of information regarding the ramification of the conspiracy organization investigating specific offenses committed in the furtherance to the common object of conspiracy. In pre-independence era, the methods for collecting and disseminating of intelligence, the system of reporting from district branch to higher positions were gradually evolved and codified over the years. It, however, goes without saying that the intelligence branch in Bengal showed outstanding ability in dealing with the terrorist violence during the period before independence. Its excellent source and innumerable channel 
of information eventually led to unearthing of all the groups responsible for terrorist violence. After the Government of India Act came into operation in 1937, the intelligence branch started losing its close contact with the Intelligence Bureau, but it retained its efficiency and capabilities to a great extent. The Quit India Movement of 1942, the Tebhaga Movement of 1946-47 and the Communal Riots of 1946 are three major political upheavals which broke out in the province before independence. The intelligence branch competently faced the challenges of these upheavals. Even during the war, the IB performed counter-intelligence tasks with great ability. The partition of Bengal province and independence were followed by communal holocaust and an unending stream of refugees from East Pakistan. As the transfer of power was taking place, the records of the intelligence branch and intelligence bureau were hurriedly destroyed or taken away, resulting in immense loss of materials for history, which cannot perhaps be fully compensated. After this, till 1969, there was no terrorism and not much of militancy in politics of the state. So, when the Naxalite insurgency broke out in the state in 1969, the intelligence branch was caught on the wrong foot. However, by 1974, it succeeded in reviving its glorious past regarding post-independence. In the post-independence period, Sri P. K. Basu as DIGIB did a pardoning work not only in the field of intelligence but in matter of reorganization of branch. He had revised the rules for internal functioning of the intelligence branch and in 1965 IB was totally separated from the CID for which another DIG was appointed. In early 1980s, the post of the DIG intelligence was promoted to the rank of Inspector Journal and later to the additional Director Journal and Director Journal. In order to meet the problems of Indo-Bangladesh, Indo-Bhutan and Indo-Nepal borders, separate border wing was created. A separate wing to look after the problems of VIP security also had been functioning under the direct supervision of Director Security. Regarding the Criminal Investigation Department, a special group of investigators called the Criminal Investigation Department is available at every police headquarters to take the investigation of grave occurrences such as a political murder, large-scale riots, bank robbery involving large sum of money or theft of precious art etc. This wing is also used for conducting inquiries into allegations of misconduct by police personnel and other police agencies. The CID during the time was divided into two sections, investigation of ordinary crimes and the other acting as auxiliary to the special branch investigating political crimes and offences arising out of the political agitation. The special branch was attached to the Office of the Inspector General of Police, but in 1908 it had to be shifted to the rented office at 41 Park Street that also accommodated the CID. Then Ham was then acting as special assistant to the Inspector General of Police and was in charge of the special branch. His service were transferred to CID as special assistant to DIG CID in charge of the special branch. The traumatic events of 1908, however, called for considerable expansion of the special branch, a case study of Bengal, as 41 Park Street was known to have housed the CID. The functioning of the special branch from this building became somewhat difficult. The secrecy was not likely to be maintained in an open office. Therefore, 7 KYD Street was taken on rent for the purpose of opening a secret office of the special branch. The government of India gave great importance to the Bengal special branch in view of the fact that Bengal at that time was the epicenter of political agitation and terrorist activities. 
In no other provinces, the special branch was recognized and strengthened the manner it was done in Bengal. The staff of the intelligence branch was considerably increased during the First World War when a full-time deputy inspector general of police was appointed to head the branch. Now regarding Directorate of Vigilance and Anti-Corruption. The Directorate of Vigilance and Anti-Corruption deals with the disciplinary cases against delinquent gazetted officer of all departments under the concerned state government. Complaint received against gazetted, non-gazetted employees from various sources are also processed. In regard to specific serious irregularities, investigation is done through anti-corruption branch. The branch conducts surveillance and apprehends corrupt public servants through laying traps and raids and are presented in the criminal court. This can be further understood by examining the example of Directorate of Vigilance, National Capital Territory, Delhi. Regarding Directorate of Vigilance, the Directorate of Vigilance functions under the supervision and control of Chief Secretary who is also Chief Vigilance Officer for the Government of the National Capital Territory of Delhi. Directorate is headed by the Director Vigilance who is also ex officio Joint Commissioner of Police Anti-Corruption Branch. It consists of two wings that is Anti-Corruption Branch supervised by the Joint Commissioner of Police, Anti-Corruption Branch and the Vigilance Branch which is being looked after by the Additional Secretary Vigilance. The Directorate deals with disciplinary cases against delinquent gazetted officers of all departments under the Government of NCT of Delhi. Complaints against gazetted or non-gazetted employees received through general public, CBI, CVC and other sources are also being processed. With regard to specific serious irregularities, investigation is done through anti-corruption branch that functions as investigating agency. The directorate also functions as nodal agency for advice on vigilance matters to CVOs of local bodies, vigilance officers, HODs and other organizations of Government of Delhi. Regarding administrative setup, the Directorate of Vigilance and Anti-Corruption Branch functions under the supervision and control of Chief Secretary Delhi who is also Chief Vigilance Officer of the Government of NCT Delhi. The Director Vigilance who heads the Directorate is also designated as Joint Commissioner of Police Anti-Corruption and function as Special Secretary Vigilance and Anti-Corruption. Regarding working, the Director Vigilance held meeting with Vigilance Officers of various departments from time to time. It monitors the work of the officers and provides suitable instructions, guidance to them. Important cases are frequently monitored by Director. Quarterly reports from all Vigilance Officers are obtained in a business-like performer. The performance of the directorate is reviewed from time to time by the Chief Secretary, CVO, Anti-Corruption Branch not only investigates the cases of corruption and bribery against public servants for offences punishable under Chapter 9 of IPC and various other provisions of Prevention of Corruption Act 1988 but also conducts vigilance inquiries against them. The branch has also been declared as a police station having jurisdiction all over NCT of Delhi. They are authorized to lay traps against the employees of the Delhi government, local bodies, other state and central government departments and their undertakings located in the entire extent of the national capital territory of Delhi. Regarding monitoring surveillance, regular monitoring, review of work on weekly basis is done by additional commissioner of police, anti-corruption and every month by director vigilance. The anti-corruption branch is now trying to reorient its functioning by emphasizing on intelligence gathering, devising, preventive strategy, systematic and procedural changes 
and by undertaking a more holistic approach to contain and control menace of corruption. In order to tackle corruption, Chief Secretary Delhi has indicated the administration to focus on citizen empowerment, transparency and enhanced IT usage. Regarding anti-corruption wing, it basically conducts surveillance and apprehends corrupt public servants by laying traps and raids. It has been declared as a police station having jurisdiction all over the NCT of Delhi and is empowered to investigate all attempts, abetments and conspiracies in relation to or in connection with the offences under the Prevention of Corruption Act. Regarding aims, objectives and roles, enforcement of Prevention of Corruption Act to tackle the problem of corruption among public servants, to identify corrupt public servants and organized effective legal action against such corrupt elements, to strengthen preventive mechanism in tackling corruption and licensing with the HODs for joint effort in this regard to function as an effective wing of criminal justice system for speedy investigation and trial of cases related to corruption. Let us conclude this presentation by the following points. The intelligence branch, crime branch, crime investigation department, directorate of vigilance and anti-corruption are amongst the most important units of police organization in any state. The intelligence branch is primarily focused on the collection of intelligence for prevention of crime. The crime branch is mainly concerned with matters pertaining to crime, investigation, prosecution and collection of criminal intelligence. The state special branch on the other hand deal with collection, collation and dissemination of intelligence on and about various political, communal, terrorist, labor activities and in relation to various law and order issues like agitation, strikes, demonstrations, etc. The Directorate of Vigilance and Anti-Corruption empowered to prevent misconduct by the government or departmental officials. Thank you.